Hello everyone. In this video, we'll take a peek into how you can improve your 3D renders in post. This will be a quick overview of the general techniques and is not a step-by-step -step software specific tutorial. Usually I go about my 3D renders with something that resembles the following. I first make sure they are as noise free as possible and then I see if there is anything I can do to improve the lighting, materials or atmospherics, then tone map, add sharpness and camera effects. Minimizing noise is important because the effects we will add later could multiply any existing noise. For example, I had some noise in this area over here. I proceeded by adding a denoise filter and then use the mask and blurred out the region. Notice I did get a tiny bit of glow as a side effect which luckily in my case was welcome. In this second one, I changed how the shadow looks by giving it a blue tint. And I also added another lighting pass to make the drone fit with the background better. The great thing about composting is that it's really easy to change things on the fly. In the previous examples, we demonstrated the first two steps in processing a CG render. We will now move to tone mapping. When you consider how adaptive human vision is, all the different image formats and various monitor standards, tone mapping and dynamic range can be a bit tricky to explain. Uh, but for more info on those subjects, you can see these two articles over here and which are linked in the description. Uh, this render should be a good example to understand tone mapping and color grading, I hope. It might not look particularly appealing at this stage, yet this render contains all the info light information we need to modify it. If we use photomatics, for instance, we already see that we could get something very different from the original render. We could also apply a filmic or any other tone mapping filter and quickly change how this render looks like. But because for me, this 3D render was a test to see if I can replicate the original reference, I manually masked all the materials and different regions of the image and applied my own color curves. The end result is more of an illustration than a render, because each part was almost manually painted. Now, if, if you can use the right tone mapping filter in your 3D application and you feel like you are getting a good result, you don't need to spend time tweaking your image. Color grading is generally extremely powerful and can help the eye navigate through the image. Areas with high contrast are bound to get more interest than ones with lower contrast and you can use that property to your advantage. This can become quite a complicated topic very quickly, but the section regarding tone mapping in the linked article should provide more information and give you some general guidelines. Sharpening and Green 3D renders have their own unique noise and edge anti-aliasing. This distinct look can reduce the realistic feel of the image. Images taken with a camera, on the other hand, have real-world noise stored in the raw image, which is then processed differently from a 3D render which results in a different look. Adding real-world grain is just one simple node, but it helps give your renders a more realistic look. But you should also experiment with anything that could break the CG look or just give your image any tiny variation. You can try sharpening the image or using different blending modes and see if the results are better.
But please note that the sharpening and grain effects are the things that make your images look better when looking up close. Color grading is what will most likely change the look of your image completely and have a profound effect on it. And finally, camera effects. There's just so many different types of camera artifacts. Lens flare, chromatic aberration, depth of field, vignetting, motion blur, etc. To go over each one individually. But a balanced use of these effects with all the above techniques can really bring your image to life. And with this we would have gone through all the major types of compositing techniques and categories you could use to improve your 3D renders. I know that many viewers would like to have an exact step-by-step -step tutorial for a specific composite using a specific tool. But this tutorial is more about generalizing all the compositing tools you use, so that you have a standard, standardized workflow to handle any 3D render. This overview certainly did not show all the tools you could use or how to use them in detail, but I believe it helps break down the basics of what you could do to process your 3D renders in post. We could have delved more into color grading and tone mapping, but at a certain point it must be said that in the end this is an artistic process. Deciding what, to, uh, what gets to have contrast and what will take the attention of the viewer's eye is something that is very hard to put rules for but can always improve with practice. For learning more about tone mapping, I suggest you see some tutorials about HDR photography and see how digital photographers may improve their images. And to also try to learn from good works of art and paintings and see how the artist directs the viewer's eye from one spot to another. There are no secrets for making a beautiful render. If you put in the effort, have a good reference, and try all you can to improve your image, you will have a good result, no matter, no matter what tools you have. Even before linear workflow, global illumination, or advanced render engines and materials, CG artists have been able to produce stunning renders when they put the effort and knew what they were doing. And everyone has that ability. And finally, this video and accompanying articles did take quite a lot of effort in researching the material and trying to present it as best as possible, time which otherwise I could have taken off. And knowing that at least it will reach and help anyone out there would mean a lot to me and if you found the video, video or articles useful, I'd appreciate it if you guys hit the like button or share it. Thank you for watching.